trying to set him up girl okay Anna and Biggie are trying to set Santana up because they are still pressed Surfer. about how he was clocking the girls at the reunion child we have so much to get into when it comes to this reunion tea some of the reunion girl it, listen it's a lot so let's just go ahead and get into it because of course a lot of the girls have a lot of things to say about the reunion now that the second part has aired so let's just go ahead and get into it Okay, so as I said, I really feel like Santana was a really good host. I feel like he was clocking teas. I feel like he was saying some things that Janisha would never say or would never get the nitty gritty down. Girl, you know what I'm saying? Like he was just getting down to business. He was getting down to business. He was asking good questions. He was making sure the girl stood on business. The only thing that I didn't care too much about was the fact that he was a little biased. I'm not gonna lie. In terms of like, if you knew, if he, if he ain't like somebody on the show, you knew he didn't like somebody on the show. Like, and when you're hosting, I feel like you should put those, put that aside. Like you can clock tea all you want to, but do you really have to like make it known that you don't, like you could tell that he did not like on a Mac. You could tell that he did not like Biggie. <laughs> you could tell that he did not like Mariah Lane. But other than that, he was clocking their tea. He was, I'm not going to lie, all of them, but not just those three. He, I feel like he was clocking everybody, which is a good quality as a host. Like you're not gonna like, just because you may like somebody doesn't mean that you're not gonna tell them about themselves. Like, no, baby. Now, of course, ever since the reunion had got done filming and wrapped up, the girls have always expressed how they did not really like Santana as the host. And you know what I'm saying? Now I kind of see why, because he was clocking y'all down, okay? But I'm not going to sit here and lie, though. It was times where he was definitely being biased, okay? But that's besides the point. So like I said, they have always expressed how they did not really like him as the host. And Biggie and Onimac especially okay, have not bitten their tongue about how they felt about Santana. Okay, so these two, girl, Tweedle D and Tweedle Dumb, girl, they got online and they basically said how they was going to set Santana up like they want Santana to come back to host because they're going to put him up against Jonathan, okay? They're going to set him up, violate him, do whatever, girl. Let's get into what they had to say. Talking about some, I don't like Anna. I'm not a fan of Anna. What did Anna do to you? When I was supporting you, when they told me you was the, 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 the host, I was like, wow, welcome like a dog is here. Mind you, I was the only one trying to help you wipe your dirty pork sweat off your forehead. And it was literally 54 degrees in the building. <laughs> your big ass was trying to stuff into that dress. You was that hot because you couldn't My boy breathe. had like a hundred corsets on. You was co compressed in the chest. And then you talking about Nunu, she right here, and, 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 and Nunu, what did you do to? Nothing, okay? You and her. <laughs> I know you sick, and then you got on Beyonce internet and lied. Lied to the people, like, you... One cousin, and you beat that girl, huh? He looked like a big-ass breath, like, I just can't... <laughs> Look at him with that turtleneck. Glasses. Where did he get them glasses Where did from? he get that dress from? Like, that was in a terrible outfit. At the end of the day, Saucy, Count your fucking blessings. I hope they bring you back for this reunion. Because I promise you, you not beating Jonathan. We're going to violate you. No. You're getting beat down to the ground. Your big ass going to be out of breath. You talking about some catch your breath. You couldn't catch one all night. You were sitting in the... No, cat. It's hot. No, cat. The nigga couldn't catch his breath all night. And you talking about me catch a breath? <gasps> You talking about me catch your breath? Oh I love saucy style. Sitting up in there. Oh I want to go and fucking Natalie like call you. Call it Natalie call you. I like saucy. I like saucy. Like no, she's lying. Every time, bro. She's every time. Right there. Bro, every Team saucy here. Clock on the y'all. Yeah, we know. Bye. He's messy as hell. You need a clock into the gym. Cause there's nothing to clock over here. Bye. 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 Arms. Let me see him throw them shits. Okay, so if y'all don't know, now y'all know Jonathan and Onamac. I mean, I, I'm not gonna sit here and say that they're friends, but they're definitely in cahoots with each other. So Onamac is like, okay, baby, you wanna try me? You wanna try to clock my tea, baby? I got something for that. Okay, <laughs> I got something for that. 
which is crazy because I literally just seen a TikTok with Kay Hood. She's an influencer, a TikToker. If you know, you know, okay? But she basically was doing like a little review of Saucy Santana and his hosting. And she pretty much was like, if I was one of the girls, like I would have called my brother on him. <laughs> nah, they need to be his last reunion for real. Cause he too, he too, he too missed it. Like when some shit like don't go his way, he get mad. Why the y'all like jumping this hoe? Nah, y'all supposed to be jumping it. Fake Kelly. Oh, nah, y'all don't, y'all don't want to see that. You would have saw my brother right after this shit. Cause what, what in the to shut the up? Like I get it. I don't know how y'all get mad when y'all see other people's point of view that that y'all don't agree with. Cause I feel like it'd be funny. But okay, it was a key. It was funny, but I don't agree with her because I feel like Biggie. Okay, let me. Okay, let's just get back on subject. Biggie and Anna. I feel like they're mad because their tea was clocked. I feel like they're mad because they was hearing stuff that they didn't want to hear. <laughs> they was hearing things that they did not want to hear. Like, I don't like, I like, I feel like he was telling y'all stuff that y'all didn't want to hear. He was clocking y'all tea. Okay. He was saying what the fans thought and y'all just did not like it. Y'all didn't know how to handle it. Like, I don't know. Like, you would have thought that, like, Santana was, like, bullying them. Like, if Santana was really projecting, like, okay, so I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, Santana, if Santana didn't care for somebody, you definitely knew that he did not care for somebody. His face always said it before his mouth did, okay? You could, you could tell if he didn't care for somebody. However... They acting like he was bullying them or something. Like if he was bullying y'all or like talking, talking ish about y'all, like calling y'all out y'all name or even like playing with y'all, like playing in y'all face. I don't feel like he was playing in their face. Like I feel like he was clocking their tea. Like, yeah, catch your breath, babe. Kiva's coming. <laughs> what do you mean? You jumped in her. Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Meatball had to catch her. When Meatball pissed off more than one person on the cast, Meatball had to catch her breath, but she a bit back, okay? Meatball is a big back. She an athletic, little fast, little girl. She a bit back, okay? So she had to catch her breath. When nobody, she wasn't copping no please. She ain't get mad. She Nobody even told her. The fact that he even had to tell you to catch your breath and get in the field with Kiva is crazy. Because you, you should have known what the reunion is to confront what you did on the show. The reunion is to confront all the ish talking. Now you saying that you're not worried about Kiva, but online, Anna Mac is still talking shit about Kiva to this day. Like, so it's just crazy to me. Like, I don't know. It's even the fact that he even had to tell you, like, catch your breath. And cause you won't have to, you baby. The fact that he even had to tell you that you got to run a fate with Kiva is crazy because you should have already known that you got to, baby, you got to get in the field with Kiva. Cause like I said, baby, you jumped in something that had nothing to do with you after hollering injured reserve all up and down the show, girl, it, get in the field. Okay. Cause like I said, ain't nobody had to tell Meatball to get in the field with nobody. No. Meatball got in the field with everybody that she needed to get in the field with. Even when a hoe tried her and tried and tried some lame stuff, which was Jayla. When Jayla tried that lame stuff and tried to call Meatball out for a fade after she had already gotten into it with multiple people. Yeah, what you talking about? She still ran that. And we was the ones complaining for her. Like, why would you sit there and why would you wait until she running phase back to back? You know she a bit bad. You know she got to catch her breath. You ain't even let her catch her breath. We complaining for her. She not even complaining. She still ran that fade back to back. Two rounds with her. Okay, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, come on now. So, I don't know. Like, I don't understand. Like, what y'all? I, I I understand because he clocked y'all. T y'all mad. Y'all mad. Y'all are mad. Biggie and Biggie got so much mouth, and it's like Biggie for you to sit up there and make these. Make you trying to crack jokes about him being big and about him, but you're big too. Like, but I'm not gonna lie though. They had me weak when they said it was 54 degrees in there and he was sweating like that. <laughs> they had me weak. Not gonna lie, but that's besides the point. Yeah, Biggie. Like, you have so much to say. Like, Biggie has so... And this is what I be talking about. That's why at a certain point, it is just so hard to feel sorry for her because she pop it too much. But she... At least on... Okay. Now, at least on the mat, got, at least she got in the field. Okay. You hold let a replacement... A replacement of all people, child. You let a replacement who didn't even have about what? We, baby, I'm being generous. 
Baby, J.O. didn't even have like an hour of screen time. Literally. I don't even think she had an hour of screen time. You let a replacement who didn't even have an hour of screen time. A replacement who, girl, come up to you and do you like that. Like, I feel like anybody's natural reaction would be to literally defend themselves. But the fact that you did not defend yourself is crazy. So again, you can't even defend yourself. You, grown. 28 years old. What are you? 28? 28 years old, pushing 30. You can't even defend yourself, but you're on live talking about how you're going to violate somebody else, how you're going to set somebody else up, how you're going to get Jonathan to get somebody else. Oh, we're going to violate you. What? The way J.O. violated you and you didn't even defend yourself? And that's what I'm saying. She has so much to say about everybody else altercation. You sitting there hooping and hollering and jumping around and playing Ring Around the Rosie when Anna Matt got into it with, with, with Mariah Lynn. When Tasiki is getting into it with Diamond Body at the reunion, you got so much to say. You got so much to say when it comes to everybody else altercations and everybody else squabbles. You're like, you have so much commentary and you got so much to say, but then a hoe came up to you and slapped you silly. Slapped you until next week, baby. What are you talking about? Slapped you until 2025 and you did not even defend yourself. But you on live talking about some how you gonna violate somebody else. For what? Violate him for what? What did he do to you? Because I don't even, like, he really ain't even say nothing too biggie. Like, Besides clock her, but like, I feel like Anna Mac or Mariah Lynn should be feeling that way more than you should. Girl, please. Girl, I'm not going to play with you, child. I'm not going to play with you. And I'm like, when I, when I watch her now, cause I still like, cause even with Anna Mac, like I know I get on Anna Mac a lot, but I still like, I feel like as a person, like, I feel like Anna Mac is very funny. She has a lot of personality. I feel the same way about Biggie. I've never denied that. Like, I, in that aspect, I like them a lot. Like, they bring, I feel like they bring comedic relief. They're just funny. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would never, I would never deny that. They are hilarious. Like, but like, Biggie, like, you just, oh, girl. Like, it, it's like, for, at, at a certain point, I used to like really feel bad for Biggie, like, and it's like, uh, a lot of us did, but it's like, now I'm just looking at her and I'm like, girl, like I see right through you now. Like you pop a lot of ish, even after she got, even, even after she got slapped down by J.O. and she didn't even defend herself. She all up and down doing everything, but getting in the field, like girl, defend yourself. Like you see here, you still popping it. And she literally just, she just like, and it wasn't even like a regular degler. Girl, it wasn't even like a regular degler one. Like, she slapped you down. Like, <laughs> oh, no. Because I could not be able to do that. Like, but again, it's like, but you have so much to say about Saucy Santana. Like, baby, he is the least of your worries. Like, you have bigger fish to fry. Next week, we are about to see you get slapped down. Like, like, baby, she literally, she literally knocked you up out your spot. Like, that's crazy. And you didn't do anything about it. Girl, next. Next caller. Next caller. Next caller. Because you ain't talking about nothing, bitch. Next caller. Okay, so we all know prior to the reunion, like, you know, when they filmed this stuff, right after that, Diamond Body came online and basically showed her face, the aftermath, all that of, you know, after she had got into it with Tessiki. All right, now we all know. Now, like me personally, I feel like I feel like it was definitely overhyped. I feel like even the girls overhyped it. Everybody overhyped it. Tessiki definitely overhyped it. And I, it just wasn't like it was a snooze fest. Like it was honestly the worst squabble of the night, in my opinion. Like Nunu and Anna Max squabble ate this one up. And like I said, I don't feel like this was Tessiki's fault at all. Like clearly Tessiki is the one that knows how to get down here. I just feel like it just, it just wasn't, it was a snooze fest. Like it was boring. Like no shade. Like it really was like, okay, but yeah, whatever. It was trash. But other than that, like, okay, so we all know that. So DTB, after that, she came online and basically spoke on that, spoke on our opinions about it, and, you know, you know, revealed some more, revealed some more about it. So let's just go ahead and get into it. It wasn't as bad as I made it seem. It wasn't as bad as I made it seem. Remember, I posted the videos and the pictures of my face. It wasn't that bad, babe. I promise you. I fly nails. You can watch it. Like, it really wasn't that bad. Like, I was even nervous to watch it. I was like, oh my God, this shit got to be fucking terrible. But I was like, okay, 
shit, I'm getting the pe- like, bitch, what's up? Like, bitch, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do feel like that outfit really fucked me up, though. I ain't gonna lie. Them big ass puff balls at the end, like, <laughs> I was sweet, like, but you seen when I changed my outfit, bitch got a little bit more <laughs> activated, you know what I'm saying? But it definitely wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like, the damage was more worse than the actual fight. You know what I'm saying? I feel like she just has really heavy hands and she punches really hard. She's really strong. So, like, bitch probably punched you three times and you fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Type shit. But the fight wasn't like... Like, bitch wasn't on the ground just getting, doo, 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 doo. like, and even when I did fall off over the couch, you know, bitch, I stood right back up after the kick and everything. Bitch, I got right back up and was still fighting. Okay, so to pretty much make a long story short, she pretty much said that she didn't get dogged out the way that she thought she did. It was literally her strength that caused that damage, not the way that she was fighting. <laughs> Lord, which I understand why she said that. I don't feel like that was really shade. I understand why she said that because Tessiki, Tessiki was not trying. Like she, that all of that was like too effortless. Like she, she didn't put much energy into DTB in my opinion. I don't really think so. Like I feel like I've seen her, I've seen her squabble a lot better. Like I've seen her run a lot better. Hey, like she did, she did better with like Marsh back on baddies east she did better with et back on baddies east but at the same time et gave her more a run for her money than dtb did but like mixed with like dtb not really able to get down mixed with um dtb like not really trying like there really wasn't much that she could do like so it was just boring so i don't think that she really put much effort into this squabble i really don't and you could see it like so so again like dtb is saying like she didn't like she didn't do much like it's, it was her strength because she literally was not trying to like <laughs> understand what you're saying girl trust me no but she's right though like the way that she posted she was posting up with those pictures she was posting up with those videos right after the reunion baby well she had us thinking that like she got dogged out like and she did she did get dog walk she did get walked down okay i'm not even going baby you she did like but like i thought it was gonna be like way worse like i don't know like i don't know what i was expecting but like like I said, Marsh got got it so much worse than that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Girl, it's just, you just, the damages, girl. That's what got me, girl. But, you know, like she said, Tessiki is very strong. She could probably, she could probably get you a good three times and you'll be, you know, like on the floor. Like, you know what I'm saying? Knotted up, on the floor, all that. So I understand what she was saying. Okay, but after, like right after the reunion aired, the second part of the reunion aired, where it showed her and Tessiki getting down, girl, she got on Twitter and she said that she quit reality TV for good. She says, and now I'm officially retired, Baddies Midwest, and Deja Vu season three is the last. Y'all will ever see me fight. I'm done. Gonna continue to serve looks and be the baddest B I can be. And give y'all all the music your ears can handle. Love all my diamond dolls for sticking beside me. Now, this is when the girls started to clock how they did not like how she was treated during the reunion. They feel like she was treated bad, not only by production, but by the girls as well. When the girls, of course, because like I said in the review, Diamond Body had a lot of phase lined up because she was doing a lot of trolling and, and talking-ish online, okay? So by the time she got to the reunion and got into it with Tessiki, nobody really felt bad for her. Everybody was on her like white on rice, which confused me as well because half of them didn't even want to run a fade with her. Like, like Chan and Hong home record did not want to run a fade they did not want to run a fade like no shade they did not want to run a fade with her but they had so much to say so again everybody on stage had so much to say they was clowning her they thought it was funny that they did not care about what she was going through at all baby okay all right so so again once dominant body came online and basically you know 
she pretty much expressed how she was done with reality TV. Like, and this is not the first time she said it, but she said that she was done with reality TV after the second part of their union aired. And you know, everybody was waking it up in the comments that she was treated badly. Let's get into these comments. Okay, so the first comment says, no lie, I felt bad for her. She looked discombobulated after the fight. And then somebody else said, they played Diamond bad at the reunion. Everyone was literally ganging up against her. And then somebody else said, I felt so bad for her. Oh my gosh, they didn't let nobody else squabble for that long. Okay, so I definitely agree with all of this. Um, do I feel bad? Okay, so I feel bad more so of how production treated her. Do I feel bad for the fact that the girls were all like, oh, I, I don't only because I kind of figured that was going to happen because again, she was talking about everybody. She was trolling everybody. She was talking ish about everybody. So that part really didn't surprise me. The only thing that irritated me about that is that, okay, so I understand she was definitely trolling y'all. y'all. So that part I didn't feel bad about. So that's what I'm trying to say. I did not feel bad about that part that everybody has something to say. Again, I seen First, I seen what DTB was doing online, okay? So that did not surprise me. I had a feeling they were going to do that. I actually thought that she was going to get jumped at the reunion. No lie. Either jumped or tag team. So, you know what I'm saying? That her, Them just talking ish to her is not worse than what could have happened. But the only thing that confused me and that irritated me about this was is that y'all all have so much to say again, rightfully so. She trolled y'all. Okay, cool. But none of y'all want to get in the field with her. Like, nobody. She literally came out again and called everybody out and nobody took that fade. Natalie literally got up and ran behind the couch. Like you're scary as hell, you're scary. Again, you have so much to say. You sit here, you picking up her tooth, you trolling with it online, kiki ha ha, it was a key, but you ran behind that couch when she came back out though. When she came back out and she was on your side, you ran behind that couch. You ran behind that couch, baby. You you ain't you ain't want you ain't want no smoke. You ain't wanna you you did not want to run no fade. A fade was not happy to y'all, but you have again. You're talking a lot. You and Scotty, Scotty definitely come on now, like girl, please, like you. Yeah. And I like Scotty, but it's like girl, you're the main one that don't want to get in the paint this reunion, girl. Girl, like please. But as soon as she leave the stage, you got so much to say. I just don't get it. Okay, so again, there were some other comments that I also agreed with as well, where it's just like, girl, this is not the first time that you said that you were going to retire and then you got right back on reality TV less than a month after that. So with the same network that you swore up and down that set you up and that you weren't you weren't going to work with anymore, girl, please. Okay, and so like I said, some, some of the girls were also clocking her tea about that. With that being said... I realize that I'm not living in my true purpose. You know what I'm saying? The real person that I am, I am a positive person. I love love. I love to laugh. I love to have fun. I love to joke. I love to play. You know, I love to uplift people. Um, I'm a good person. And I noticed that if I continue this path of being around these soulless people, I might turn into one for real. I might have to get into that mode of, okay, no, I can't. I, I got to be like them. You know what I'm saying? I got to be ruthless. I got to be, you know, toothless. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I don't want to continue to, to be this person that I'm not for y'all entertainment. I don't want to continue to be, you know what I'm saying? This heartless person, this big or oh, fighter fight. Like I'm not a fight. Like. I can fight. I know how to defend myself. I grew up fighting. But that's not something that I carry in my daily, everyday life. That is not something that I'm just pride myself on or I'm just so proud of being able to fight and, and hurt people. Like, I don't want to hurt people. I don't. I hate hurting people. And I hate, I don't want to get hurt. But that's not me, guys. And I don't want that to be me. So, if you love me, go stream my music. You know, help me get this record deal, y'all. That's all I want. I want a record deal. I want to be an artist. I don't want to be a reality TV star. So again, at, at this point, you know, it's, it's just giving wishy-washy. Like, I really don't know. Because again, she literally said all this just to backtrack, contradict everything that she said before. 
and literally get casted for Baddies Midwest not even a month after that happened to her. Like, she still, well, I think that she just got her teeth fixed. But she went on to Baddies Midwest literally with her lip still split and her tooth still gone. So it's like, I don't know, girl, I, I'll believe it when I see it at this point. Okay, so Bianca um mariah lynn and agent all are now going back and forth online child okay so in the last episode of the reunion chat y'all seen bianca she left okay girl she disappeared girl she turned into a ghost we no longer seen her once agent all came out on stage and then like i said in my review it's hard to kind of chop and screw and cut that to make it look a certain way because again bianca was there up until that point like bianca was there for everything after her altercation with Mariah Lynn, she was up, she was up there up until Asian Doll came and the girl disappeared. She slid up out of there. Okay. She knew Asian Doll wanted that and she slid up out of there. Now, of course, I will give her her tens for doing what she did and serving justice to Mariah Lynn, baby. Oh, uh, Brianca, girl, you did your big one, girl. Okay. Although you snuck her, but still, okay. You did that. Okay. She had you snuck. She betrayed you. She has you snuck. Bianca, I mean, Mariah Lynn been sneaking people. Girl, please. Okay, you did your you did your big one, and that, that's what it was. But, girl, uh, we, we're on you. No shade. Or at least the, the non-biased people are on you, girl. Because you're scary. You, you left the stage once Asian Doll came. Once they called out Asian Doll, girl, you was nowhere to be found. And, baby, they are clowning her online. Not everybody, but, you know, Mariah Lynn and Asian Doll. Okay, Asian doll is snapping online, girl. She's mad. She wanted that fade, okay? And she felt like she she was robbed of that fade because Bianca was too scary to to, to get in the pain with her, okay? Let's go, let's go ahead. <laughs> Which is crazy to me that Bianca was scared because Asian doll is not even that good of a... <laughs> like, okay, she got Mariah Lynn, but Mariah Lynn is Mariah Lynn. But, like, to me, Asian Doll cannot squabble that good. Like, so, I don't know. Girl, what are you scared for? Anyways, child, let's move on to what the girls had to say. Okay, so, of course, Mariah Lynn, girl, Mariah Lynn was itching. Girl, Mariah Lynn couldn't wait to get online and clown Bianca for leaving. Okay, so, Mariah Lynn said, as soon as it was said, let's welcome Asian Doll to the stage. <laughs> All right, so, this is how I feel about this. Okay, so... It's like, I get it, but I don't. It's like, I really get it because one thing about Mariah Lynn, okay? We don't really, a lot of us don't really care for her. I know, child, I know I don't. But I am not biased, baby. One thing about Mariah Lynn, Mariah Lynn will get in the paint with whoever, okay? She will, win, lose, or draw. And I've always given her that. She's She always stood in the paint. She don't care. She ain't never run from nobody, especially Asian Doll. She was, girl, You, you we all seen it, girl. Mariah Lynn was itching to get in a paint with Asian Doll. Even when she was getting, even when Asian Doll was using her as her own personal lawnmower, she turned Mariah Lynn into a lawnmower, okay? Mariah Lynn was still itching to go round for round. She was still itching to get into it with Asian Doll. So you know what? I get it. I understand why she's clowning Bianca because it's like, baby, you, <laughs> girl, you were so quick to sneak me in and, and girl, tear me up, but it's, girl, <laughs> You, you, you running from, you running and ducking and dodging phase from Asian doll, Asian doll, Asian doll, like Asian doll got Mariah Lynn. Like I said, I'm never going to take that away from her, but girl, you running from Asian doll. God. <laughs> All right. Anyways, but yeah, so I understand why Mariah Lynn is talking her ish, popping her ish, because again, Mariah Lynn never backed down from Asian doll. She ran the face with Asian doll. Like I said, even when she was getting tore up. She still didn't want to stop. She never wanted to stop. And she was itching for a fade before that. She was itching for a fade before they got into it. She was itching for a fade during the little altercations or whatever. So I understand because it's like, girl, you're scary. Like you're not really, you're not really, you're not really messing with me for real. Like you're scary. Like somebody that I went round for round with wasn't scared at all. Wanted, wanted more and wanted more. Still got toe up, but still one of my fade was still itching for a fade. Girl, you ran from girl. You couldn't even girl. You couldn't even confront the, which I know. Let me tell you something. I don't care what excuse Bianca come online and say. The way I knew that Bianca was scary, to, to, too scary to get in the paint with Asian doll, and didn't really want to confront her issues with, a, with Asian doll. <laughs> the the how I know this is because like 
she like like okay so y'all remember like the day that they pretty much found out that bianca was carrying the bone and you know like you know you know basically playing both sides between asian doll and mariah lynn okay so when they found that out like bianca was so quick to leave like when they were starting to put two and two together like she, <laughs> the way she left so fast like she did not like girl baby you're the topic of discussion like why are you leaving that's how i know and again i listen it is what it is girl we've been calling bianca scary well a lot of us have okay and like I said, she got a little bit of redemption by what she did to, to Mariah Lynn. But like, we're not finna just, I don't care how much y'all like her. We're not finna just get past the fact that she's scary. We've been saying that she was scary. She was scary when Sapphire, when her and Sapphire sat at that table. And Sapphire was trying her, calling her out, all out her name. And again, it was only her and Sapphire. So she can't use, she can't use the excuse that she was reading the room or that she was scared that she was going to get ganged up on or anything like that. She didn't want to get you. No. It was you and Sapphire in that room by yourself. Sapphire was calling out your fade. She was trying you. She was calling you all out your name. And guess what? You ain't do nothing about it, baby. You told her you ain't want, you ain't want no nothing. You ain't want no nothing. Sapphire gets up from the table. That's when Bianca starts popping her ish. Right after Sapphire just little girl you and you didn't do anything about it. Okay? We knew she was scary. You know what? I'm not even going to use that one because like I said, she said she was reading the room. Girl, I'm going to let you say that. Girl, but it's other examples. Like, we knew you were scary when you ran a fade with Bianca and Sapphire. No, no, when you ran a fade with Mariah Lynn and Sapphire and you literally, you were literally, girl, you went so fast to that truck and then you started popping your ish outside the truck. You would not get out the truck and you started to spit again outside the truck like i don't know she has just displayed so many actions of being scary so the fact that people are still trying to act blind to it is crazy like bianca is scary like bianca is scary bianca is picky choosy i said what i said like she did what she did with mariah lynn she ate that down but still Okay, so let's get into it. So a fan basically tweeted to Bianca and said, why you leave the reunion? Bianca said, because me, my sisters, and little brother had a flight to catch. My whole family was out there, and we stayed till 4 a.m. Ish was a rap. I got paid to squabble who I squabbled and left anybody else want to let me know and cut a bigger check. She basically saying, baby, I got in the paint with who I needed to get in the paint with, and anybody else who had a problem or who wanted to get in the paint with me, Zeus is going to have to cut a bigger check. So Agent Doll is clearly mad and still feeling a type of way. So she said, bitch, you left once they called my name. Everybody on that stage seen it, production seen it. Ho, stop lying, scary ass. Okay, so clearly a Bianca fan came online and, you know, basically defended Bianca for leaving the stage. So the person said, y'all got to realize how messy baddies is. Tommy was standing up when Bianca left and when Asian was coming out, she was sitting down. Two different time frames. At Bianca is not lying. She left way before she came out. All right. All right, so this is what Asian Doll said. She said, Cap, me and Anna took four minutes to come out after they called our name because we was putting our shoes on. Bianca was still sitting there, okay? Everyone can vouch. It looked edited because we took a, a, a little minute to come out because we was debating on keeping our shoes on, okay? I even told Jonathan to see if she was sitting there, and he said, yeah. Saucy even said she dipped once they called my name. This hoe is a punk, point blank period she never filmed with me after the day i fought mariah because she didn't want to get into it yeah so she like you know i feel like bianca's just scary like and i feel like the whole oh i came and i got into it with who i needed to get into it with, and then i dipped i don't really believe that because again she avoided asian doll like like again like she just uh, she been avoiding asian doll you know what i'm saying like if she had gotten into it with Asian Doll on the show, that would have been a different story. If she would have confronted her issues with Asian Doll on the show, that would have been a different story. But ever since Asian Doll, again, ever since she caught on to how Bianca was playing both sides of the fence, she has been avoiding with Asian Doll since then. She has. She has been avoiding filming with her since then. Okay. She didn't want to film. She didn't want to talk. She didn't want to do nothing with Asian Doll. Okay. So it's just not surprising to me. And then again, you're sitting here and you're saying like, oh, I got into it with who I needed to get into it with. I squabbled with who I needed to squabble with. But baby, you saying that, but like that didn't stop you. That didn't stop you from a uh, girl doing an H-Town stump on a uh, diamond body head. Like 
It didn't stop you from, from getting into and jumping in Tessiki and Diamond altercation. You know? Like, so it, it's not even like you just got into it with one person. Like, you also jumped in when Tessiki was getting into it with DTB. So I just, like, I, I'm just not buying it. Like, I'm not buying the whole, oh, I had to catch a flight. If you needed to catch a flight, you would have been left. Not conveniently leave when Asian Doll come out on stage and you know she need that from you. Like, I don't know. But, you know, it is what it is, girl. You know, we all, we been clocked that Bianca was scary. That It is what it is. And just because she ate, because she did. I'm not gonna lie, girl. That first part of the reunion, girl, she ate bad. But, like, we're not finna sit here and act like she not scary still when it comes to Asian Doll. And, again, I don't understand why, child. Like, I just... Child, please. Okay, child. So last but not least, um, Tinkabella, she got online and she told Tommy, baby, I am going to, I'm going to get you pretty much. She said, I I'm going I'm to smack you down. Okay. And I'm pretty much, I'm guessing that she's referring to the little pep talk that Tommy had with Meatball, where Tommy was like, let that whole crash out. Like, and basically was telling Meatball, was treating Meatball as if Tinkabella was the fake friend okay so me personally i feel like tommy to, uh, girl I, <laughs> okay so i said this in my review that and uh, some of y'all disagree with me okay but i said that i feel like tinkabella i feel like what she went through on the show was definitely overlooked and it was overshadowed by the fact that Meatball was pretty much the underdog at the reunion. And y'all know the Baddies fans, and I feel like anybody who watches Baddies or who is a fan of Baddies, they gravitate towards the underdog. I said this in my review. Um, and I don't know. I feel like, I feel like because we, we was all popping in about how Meatball was this, Meatball was that, Meatball was a fake friend. And then, girl, y'all, um, Meatball get into it with Tinky, y'all cheering for Meatball. And again, I low-key was too because only because, not even because she got into it with Tink. I wasn't like cheering for her because she was into it with Tink because, girl, whatever. We, we all seen what happened on the TV, but I more so was like, okay, so she went in these phase back to back. She had athletic little bit back. She not stopping. She not copping her please, baby. She is running these phase. She is standing on business, okay? But it's again, I feel like. I feel like the fact that she was fake, jealous, and insecure towards Tink, and uh, again, just uh, overall, just not a good friend on the show. Like you know, she. I feel like this was definitely overlooked when it was crazy because a lot of y'all was popping it in the comments about it. But baby, at the reunion, y'all was cheering her on, child. So again, I understand Tink's frustration, especially because Tommy again is talking to Meatball like Tink is the bad guy. So. I understand why Tink wants that. I do. I'm not going to lie. I under I, I love Tommy, but I understand why she wants that. I love Tommy, and I love the pep talk that she gave me, Paul. But I understand Tink's point of view, too, because, baby, no. Y'all not, not going to try to play me like I'm the fake one here. Okay? All right, y'all. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video and sticking with me all the way until the end. Baby, if you made it this far, go ahead and drop a blue heart emoji to let me know that you're a real messy mom member and you stuck with me 38 minutes in, almost 40 minutes, girl. We are at 30K. We hit 30K subscribers, 30K messy mom members. Don't play with me. Do not play with y'all, okay? It's Messy Maya. I'm out this hoe. Bye.